Last Saturday, the Texans trimmed down their roster from 90 to 53. At that point, I didn't want to make the video on my thoughts on the 53-man roster because I knew that the Texans were going to make a few waiver claims. So that 53-man roster that came out on Saturday wasn't the final one going into week one. This one right here is most likely going to be the one going into week one. I highly doubt it changes again unless like they pick up some other player. But here are my thoughts on it. That quarterback, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Whedon, Joe Webb. Joe Webb was initially cut. And, you know, I honestly didn't care because, let, let's be honest, guys. Joe Webb cannot throw a football. Well, he can throw a football, but, you know, he's, he's not a good quarterback. Brandon Whedon is a way better quarterback than Joe Webb. But, of course, Joe Webb brings that mobility that, obviously, Whedon doesn't have. And, of course, you got the special team's ability. So, I am really not too comfortable with the backup quarterback position. But, you know... If I sit here and worry about it, that means I'm worried about Watson's health. And personally, I'm not worried at all about Watson's health. I 100% believe that Watson will play all 19 games all the way to the Super Bowl. But, you know, I'm comfortable with the quarterback spot. At running back, we have Lamar Miller, Alfred Blue, Tyler Irvin, Greg Howell, who we just picked up off the waivers from Miami, and Foreman's on the pup list. Now, I know a lot of people were bummed out that Tremaine Pope didn't make the team. I, I don't really care. Tremaine Pope wasn't really all that impressive to me. Now, Greg Howell, I, I think this guy can actually, you know, have an impact on the team. He's like 6'1", around 215 pounds. He's not, you know, not the fastest guy. I think he ran like a 2'5'5 five, five at the Combine. But th this guy is an actual running back. He is a three down back. He could be a receiving back. He's pretty much a mini foreman, I guess you could say. And not as bulky, but th this guy can pretty much do it all. I really like this guy. And honestly, after week six, when foreman comes back from the pup list, I could see Howell being Alfred Blue's replacement. I really could. Fullback. We didn't carry a fullback this year, and I don't really care because Jay Prosh only played 10% of offensive snaps last year, and he played, I believe it was like 50% of special team snaps, so he was really just pretty much taking up a roster spot, man. Like, we, we could use that spot for somewhere else, and this year O'Brien obviously opted to not keep a fullback, so what will we do at fullback, do you ask? Probably... Jordan Thomas in certain situations. Offensive line. We only kept eight offensive linemen this year. Julian Davenport, Sean Terrell Henderson, Martinez Rankins, and Kendall Lamb. <laughs> I know everybody hates Kendall Lamb, but I mean, the, the odds that he sees a playing field are the minimum, so I don't really care. Zach Fulton, Sanio Kilometti, Nick Martin, and Greg Manx. See, when I initially saw that we carried eight offensive linemen, I was like initially kind of low-key pissed, but then the more you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, you know, most teams do carry nine offensive linemen, sometimes even ten, but for the Texans, it makes sense. Of course, you got your starting offensive linemen, Julian Davenport, Zach Fulton, Nick Martin, Sunil Kilometti, and Sean Tro Henderson. Those are your five starting linemen. Okay, okay, now consider this. Zach Fulton can play left guard, center, right guard. Sunil Kilometti can play left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. So two of your starters are really versatile. And then you go into, you know, Greg Max. Greg Max can play center, and he can play left guard and right guard. And then you got Martinez Rankin, who could play left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. So, the Texans have versatile alignment. 
just looking at this group, it has more depth than last year. Just by adding pretty much Martinez ranking, man. Not even if, if you don't like the pick, if you don't like the pick, the guy is great depth. Yeah, he didn't look good in preseason, but that was his first ever start, like three days after coming off an injury, and he hadn't practiced, so you gotta, you know, like cut him some slack there. At tight end, we have Ryan Griffin, Jordan Akins, Jordan Thomas. No big surprise here. I mean. I'm honestly not comfortable with this tight end group, but this is probably the best three that were on the team to start off the year. So, you know, obviously they made the team. This team has, or this tight end group has upside because obviously you got two rookies, Jordan Aikens and Jordan Thomas. So, like, m maybe these guys perform like rookies and don't do much. Or maybe they, they ball out, you know, they surprise. And, you know, Ryan Griffin, despite him being just an average tight end, Deshaun Watson's obviously really, really comfortable throwing to Ryan Griffin, so Deshaun Watson will really elevate his game. So, I'm um, iffy on the tight end group, but you, you weren't going to get much better. Wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins, Wolf Fuller, Kiki QT, Bruce Ellington, Sammy Coach and surprise, surprise, Vincent Smith. Vincent Smith made the team over Braxton Miller. And I, I guess it just it's just what the Texans were looking for, I guess. Because if you think about it, QT and Ellington are slot receivers. So who are the backups to Hopkins and Fuller? You got Sammy Coach who can play on the outside. And now you get Vincent Smith. 6'3", he, can, he ran a 4'3", so. The guy's fast and big. You, you don't get that combination. He's extremely raw, so he's got time to develop. He's the sixth wide receiver. I am really comfortable with this wide receiver group. Compared to last year, our wide receiver group this year is stacked. Stacked. So, now we move on to the defense. At defensive end spots, we got Watt, Covington, Heath, Blackson, and Carlos Watkins. I mean, th these are no-brainers. These guys, this position group is stacked. And then you add in that nose tackle DJ Reader, Brandon Dunn, who can both play defensive end as well. My God, dude. We have seven defense linemen. Six of which would be starting on almost every single other team. Like, I don't think a lot of people understand how good Heath and Blackson are or Brandon Dunn. Like, seriously, we are so deep at defensive line. Outside linebacker, Jadavion Clowney, Whitney Merciless, Duke Ejiofor, and Brennan Scarlett. Again, no surprise this year, we have Ejiofor, who is going to be so great for the Texans. He'll be the Texans' designated situational pass rusher, which is something they haven't really had in a while. You have to have Brennan Scarlett, but Brennan Scarlett's more of a run-stopper, edge-setter type of guy, rather than a pass rusher, edge rusher. So... Again, outside linebacker group, stacked. Inside linebacker, Bernardrick McKinney, Sack Cunningham, Dylan Cole, Brian Peters, and Peter Columbayi. Not really surprised about this. Peter Columbayi got some work in that inside linebacker week four preseason, and he looked way better than he did at outside linebacker because Columbayi is extremely athletic. So, Columbayi, he could play outside linebacker. He could play inside linebacker. You know, just a versatile guy. I really like the fact that they threw him in here. Again, his side linebacker group is stacked. At corner, Jonathan Joseph, Kevin Johnson, Aaron Colvin, Kayvon Webster, Johnson Badamosi. Yeah, a lot of people are going to complain about the starters. And you know what? I'm going to have to agree. The starters are questionable. Jonathan Joseph, of course, old age. Definitely questionable. Kevin Johnson had a bad year last year. Is he going to have a bad year again? Or will, we, or will he bounce back to 2015-2016 form? Or will he, you know, build on what he had going in 2015 and 2016? We don't know yet. So as of right now, corner is definitely questionable. Aaron Colvin, a huge upgrade over last year's Kareem Jackson nickel corner. And then you got Kayvon Webster and Johnson Badamosi as your backup corners 
Now, yes, despite our corner group being quite questionable, our starting corners, well, Joseph and Kevin, because Colvin's fine. Depth-wise, I'd say we're pretty good, man. Like, compared to last year, we're good. Kayvon Webster can be a legitimate starter. Like, if Kevin Johnson struggles, you could literally throw in Kayvon Webster and we'd be good, man. He is that type of good. I mean, obviously, he's not a star corner, but he's a solid starting corner in the NFL. Johnson Vatamosti, I wouldn't really want to see him out there that much, but he's just a special teamer. Regardless, though, depth-wise, I'm comfortable with the corner group for now. Starters, eh, they're still, I still have to see, you know, like, I, I can't really judge them. Joseph, he looked old and washed up last year, but he does have a new training staff, so, you know, maybe they help him out. The word on the street is, yes, he does look, you know, younger, feels younger, but, you know, they everybody says that, so. You can't really take his word for it. And Kevin Johnson did look good in training camp and practice and all that. But the the one like play he really got targeted in preseason, the only play he got targeted in preseason, he got beat and got concussed. So, I mean, you, you just don't know. And then at safety, we have Tyron Matthew, Kareem Jackson, Justin Reed, A.J. Moore, who we picked up. From the Patriots practice squad. This guy is just a special teamer pretty much. And the Trill Jamerson. That we picked up from the Saints. Off the waiver wire. So Jamerson. I think this is actually a guy with potential. He was a fifth round pick. And the Saints cut him. The Saints were using him as a nickel corner. And surprisingly, man, like whenever I saw the news about Jamerson that, you know, we picked him up, a lot of Saints fans were really upset because apparently he was doing that good. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe we got a steal in Jamerson. And if we did, we have him for four years because we take his contract. And then the rest of the guys in the safety group, you know, Tyron, Matthew, Kareem, Jackson, Justin Reed, in one season... It looks like Brian Gain fixed the safety group. Complete revamp from last year, way better. And you pretty much just brought in Tyron Matthew and Justin Reed. Kareem Jackson was already on the team. He just switched positions. But I am way more comfortable with this safety group moving forward. And the special teamers. You got John Weeks, long snapper. Kaimi Fairbairn, the kicker. And Trevor Daniel, the punter who beat out. Shane Leckler, and a lot of people were bummed out about Leckler, but it had to happen. You know, Leckler's time was done. Trevor Daniel was clearly the better punter. He was punting better, just straight up punting better. So just overall, looking at the roster, this roster is way better than last year's. Way better. We have better starting offensive linemen. The tackles are questionable still to me. I hope they do good. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yeah, Julian Downport is going to be a pro bowler. And Sean Troy Henderson, he's going to be an all-pro. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that because I don't know. Nobody really knows how they're really going to pan out. I mean, I'm hoping that they perform well. But what I will tell you is our guard spots are fine. Zach Fulton, he is going to be a good guard for us. Nick Martin, he's going to be a good center for us. Samuel Kalametti, I put him at average to above average. But again, you know, tackle spots, concerning. But regardless, we have more depth there. And, you know, the corner spots, like I talked about, stars are concerning, but we do have more depth there. So, overall, this team actually has more depth than it did last year. I think this team can actually survive injuries. I think it actually could. Way better than last year's team did. Now, I'm not saying this team's going to get injured again. At least I hope not. But, you know, if push comes to shove, this team should perform better 
than last year's teams if things get rough. And, you know, I wasn't a fan of the Brian Gain hiring, but, you know, I gotta give credit where it's due. The roster looks improved. Again, way more depth. And something that made me happy is that Brian Gain made the moves that needed to be done to make the team successful. And what I mean by that, we didn't need Jay Prosh. Get him out of here. Guess what? Brian Gain got him out of here. Trevor Daniel, he's a better punter than Shane Leckler at this point in Leckler's career. So you know what? Get Leckler out of here. Brian Gain got rid of Leckler. In the past, I'm sure, under Rick Smith, the Texans would have gone, Whoa, man, you know, I really like Jay Pross and Shane Leckler. You know, let's keep them around. The Texans made moves that were needed. And another thing that Brian Gain did, more special teamers, man. Rick Smith never, ever, ever focused on special teamers. We have some special teamers now. A.J. Moore, Johnson Batamosi in particular. You know, of course, we got Brian Peters already on the roster. Peter Columbayi. Like, we have some actual special teamers now, guys. That's crazy. And, of course, depth. Rick Smith, it seemed like he didn't really care about depth. Brian Gain actually does. So, you know, I, I am really happy with the roster. And, yeah, that's all I really have for you guys today. So, yeah, be sure to like comment and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys later peace